All right, welcome to the deep dive. You guys sent us a ton of research about using vetiver grass, um, specifically in farm systems. So we're gonna go deep on that today. We're gonna yeah. pull out the most important stuff, the most surprising, interesting things, and uh, give you really good understanding of it all without you know having to read through all these long papers. Yeah, vetiver grass. Um, it might seem like a pretty basic plant, but it's actually kind of amazing in terms of its applications in agriculture, especially for tropical and um, semi-arid regions. Okay, so like, why even use vetiver grass on a farm in the first place? Oh. What makes it so important? One thing we saw in the research is that it actually benefits way more than just the farm itself. It yeah. even leads to cleaner water, like for everybody. Right, less sediment and less chemicals, you know, running off into waterways. That's definitely a big deal. Yeah, it really is. And then, of course, there are the on-farm advantages, which are, like, super obvious once you start thinking about it. Like, there can be huge reductions in soil loss. Like, some areas lose 20 to 100 tons of soil per hectare per year. Wow, per year. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of soil. And vetiver grass is, like, a key player in stopping that from happening. Soil is such a precious resource. I mean, once it's gone, it's gone. Exactly. And you know what our sources really emphasize? This idea that losing soil is basically the same as losing water. Because, uh, you know, if a farm is losing all its soil, it, it can't hold on to water as well, right? Of course. Yeah. Makes total sense. But here's the thing that surprised me. We tend to think that erosion is only a problem on hilly land, right? Mm. But um, even flat areas, places with slopes less than 1%, can actually have really bad erosion. Oh, really? Yeah. Like there can even be gullies forming on, uh, what are they called? Vertisols? <laughs> oh, yeah. Vertisols, those are, um, they're those clay rich soils and they crack when they're dry, right? Exactly. And oh. that's what makes them vulnerable to erosion, even if they're on flat land. Huh. Interesting. Okay. So speaking of erosion control, our sources spend a lot of time comparing vetiver grass technology or VGT to those more uh, conventional methods, like building mm -hmm. those big terraces and buns. Uh. Yeah. Those hard engineered solutions. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, the sources are pretty clear that those methods have some major drawbacks. Like they can be really expensive to build and maintain. Yeah. Especially the maintenance. Right. And then there's the fact that they often just straight up fail, especially with like really heavy rainfall. Mm. And then on top of all that, they take up a lot of space on the farm. You know, they can divert rainfall away from where it needs to be. And sometimes they can even ironically cause more erosion if they aren't built perfectly. Oh, wow. And like they don't really do anything else besides the erosion control. Right. That's a good point. Yeah. There are even pictures in some of these sources of like buns and terraces that have completely failed. So, yeah, I mean, in theory, they sound good. But right. In practice. In practice, it's a lot more complicated. <laughs> yeah. And so that's where VGT comes in, right? It's yeah. way cheaper to set up and maintain, and it rarely fails. It doesn't need much space, and it won't divert water from where it's needed. <laughs> Plus, and this is pretty amazing, it can actually help heal gullies that are already there. Oh, wow. And it's not just about erosion control. There are tons of other benefits. Mm -hmm. One study found 30 centimeters of silt building up behind a vetiver hedgerow in one year. And the speed of the runoff water basically went down to nothing right at the hedge. So it's like a natural filter? Yeah. It's so cool. So it's not just keeping the soil from moving. It's actually capturing it and slowing down the water. Makes sense. Okay. So how do we actually use vetiver grass? Like what are the practical ways to put it to work on a farm? Our sources outline six main modes of application, and we're going to walk you through those. Okay. First up, we have using vetiver as a soil and water conservation system, basically for the whole farm. Yeah, like a kind of like a foundation. Exactly. Creating this uh, natural infrastructure, you could call it, across the entire farm. These vetiver hedges hold everything in place. Holding the soil, holding the water makes the whole farm more stable, so it's easier to do other good things. Right. Then the second mode is more about um, strategically adding in vetiver hedges, mm. like to existing systems to deal with soil and water. More of a targeted approach. Yeah. You just put it where it's needed most. Our sources have some cool examples of this, yeah. like protecting drainage lines in Madagascar and South Africa, uh, or using it as windbreaks in China. Windbreaks. Huh. Yeah, and even using it as mulch in Indonesia instead of burning everything down. Oh, wow. That's great. So it's a pretty versatile plant. It really is. Okay. Now the third mode gets even more interesting. This is where we start seeing vetiver going beyond just erosion control. 
it can actually make crops grow better. Yeah, this is where we see those extra benefits. So, for example, using vetiver as mulch adds organic matter to the soil. Right, and helps the soil hold on to moisture better. Mm -hmm. It can even make the soil temperature more stable. And there's this cool thing with a type of fungi called arbuscular mycorrhiza. It's like a network in the soil, and vetiver seems to have a great relationship with it. So they kind of work together. Yeah, and this helps both the vetiver and nearby crops to take up nutrients better, which, you know, leads to healthier soil. That's amazing. And some farmers are planting vetiver specifically next to certain crops because it helps them grow. Wow. But it's not just about the soil. Vetiver can also be a home for good insects, like those wasps that eat the bad bugs that suck the sap out of plants. So it's like a natural pest control. Exactly. And it even helps control some pests directly. Oh, really? Like what? Like uh, stem borers in rice and maize. Oh, yeah. Those are a big problem. It can also be used with sugarcane. And there's some evidence that it might actually help with fall armyworm as well. Really? Yeah, fall armyworm might be drawn to vetiver, but it's not their favorite food, so they'd rather go for the maize. So it could be a way to distract the pest from the crops. That's so clever. Right. And the way it works with the stem borers is really cool. It's like a, um, what do they call it, a dead-end trap crop. What does that mean? So basically... Vetiver gives off a smell that's kind of like the crops these pests like, so they're attracted to it. But the larvae can't actually survive on vetiver. They need something else to really thrive, so they get stuck there. Dead end. Wow. That's amazing. And get this. Up to 90% of toxins are stored in the vetiver's roots, so it can actually stop toxins from reaching the crops. Seriously? Yeah. So this could actually be important for, like, organic certification. Oh, that makes sense. And don't forget, it helps boost biodiversity, especially during the winter when not much else is growing. Plus, it's good for livestock feed, too. It really does a lot. It's so cool. One of the yeah. coolest things is that example they give of a banana plant that started producing fruit two months earlier because it was planted next to vetiver. That's huge. Yeah. And just imagine how much less pesticide you'd need. Right. Okay, so what's next? Mode number four, bioengineering applications. What does that even mean? It's basically using vetiver to build stuff. Like, yeah. it has this super strong root system that can grow, like, meters deep. Really? That deep? Yeah. So it's perfect for stabilizing, like, farm ponds and building sites. So it can help hold the soil in place around those structures. Exactly. It can also be used to reinforce dam walls and spillways and even help with erosion along roadsides. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it's also great for naturally rehabilitating gullies. And it can strengthen canals and riverbanks. It's like a living construction material. That's incredible. So much better than using concrete. Way more natural and it lasts longer. Okay, what's number five? Mode number five is all about dealing with um, pollution from farming. You know, keeping the environment clean. Right. Turns out, vetiver is really good at naturally cleaning things up. Like, it can filter wastewater from those latrine systems through a process called phytotranspiration. What's that? The plants basically absorb the water and then release it as vapor, and that cleans out the contaminants. Wow. That's incredible. And it's also being used to clean gray water and even treat piggery waste. No way. Yeah. They even use it to manage those farm trash dumps. They showed before and after pictures, and the difference is amazing. So vetiver can actually break down trash. Well, it helps to stabilize it and stop any nasty stuff from leaking out into the environment. Okay, last but not least, we have mode number six, which focuses on the money-making side of things. Right. Beyond just the on-farm benefits, there are tons of business opportunities related to vetiver. Yeah, like what? Well, you could sell the plants themselves to people doing those bioengineering projects we talked about, or you could become like a vetiver consultant. A consultant. Yeah, help people design and implement vetiver systems. That's actually a really good idea. And, of course, there's the more traditional uses, like thatching roofs and using it as feed for livestock. Oh, right. And then there's the vetiver oil. You can extract that and sell it. It's used in perfumes and aromatherapy, and it's pretty valuable. Oh, I didn't know that. And people even make crafts with the leaves and roots. Exactly. Vetiver is like a gold mine. It really is amazing how many uses there are for this one plant. So... Let's talk bigger picture for a minute. Our sources mm -hmm. talk a lot about climate smart farming and the long-term benefits of vetiver. Oh, yeah. VGT is like a perfect example of a nature-based solution to climate change. Right. They even talk about this huge farm in Ethiopia that has over 250 kilometers of vetiver hedges. That's like 1.5 million plants. Yeah. 
That's incredible. I know. That's a serious commitment to sustainability. And a well-maintained vetiver hedge can last for over 20 years. Right. And over that time, the benefits just keep adding up. Exactly. Like way less rainfall is lost, up to 70% less runoff, which means more water stays on the land and it's distributed more evenly. Which is amazing for the soil, right? Oh, yeah. Soil moisture increases, water infiltrates better. It all leads to more groundwater recharge, too. And wetlands can actually be restored. Plus, we already mentioned the erosion control is super impressive. It can even help to create natural terraces over time. Natural terraces. Yeah. So it actually changes the shape of the land, making it less steep and more resistant to erosion. And then that creates a permanent key line, which is super helpful for contour cultivation. Oh, that's so smart. It's really cool how it works with the land. And our sources really stress that it's so much more resilient than other methods, especially during extreme weather events. Which are unfortunately becoming more and more common with climate change. Right. So we need solutions that are tough and can last. Exactly. And vetiver is one of those solutions. It's like a long-term investment in the land. Makes you think differently about farming. Totally. Okay, so last thing. We talked about how vetiver can protect entire farms, whether they're hilly or flat. The research shows it working in all sorts of places, like South Africa, Ethiopia, and Cuba. Those are all pretty different places geographically. I know. And it's not just for hillsides. It even works on those tricky, black, cracking soils. Those are vertizols. They can erode really easily, even though they're flat. And they've even used it in Australia and Zimbabwe. And in some cases, they're planting these hedges 100 meters apart on flatland. Who would have thought? And for those big farms, they've even got machines for planting the vetiver and digging it up from the nursery. So it's scalable, too. Yeah. It works for small farms and big farms. That's awesome. So to sum it all up, what are the key takeaways for our listeners? Vetiver is basically a super versatile, natural solution for soil and water problems. It stops erosion, but it also makes soil healthier, helps control pests, supports farm infrastructure, cleans up pollution, and can even make you some money on the side. And it works in all sorts of climates, from the hills to the flatlands. On farms of all sizes. Exactly. So whether you're a farmer or just someone who cares about sustainability, understanding vetiver is like a glimpse into the future of agriculture. Definitely. This deep dive has shown just how much potential there is in this little plant. Absolutely. So here's a final thought for you all. If vetiver can do all of this, what other amazing things can we find in nature to build a better, more sustainable world? It's definitely something to think about. Thanks for joining us on The Deep Dive.